Hi, folks. Steve Urban here, founder and CEO at RiderFlex. We hope you enjoy today's podcast. And as a reminder, please subscribe to the RiderFlex show for updates on new episodes. And by the way, if you haven't already, check out the book we recently launched, The RiderFlex Guide, Inspiring and Hiring, available for purchase on Amazon. And now, a quick word from our sponsor. Try the number one marketing platform for small business. Everything you need from design to marketing to CRM. Learn more at marketing360.com. Marketing 360. Fuel your brand. Karen Warner on the RiderFlex podcast. Hello, Karen. Hello, Steve. So good to see you. Um, very nice to meet you. Are you in Boston or are you in Mass or whereabouts are you? I'm just a little bit north of Boston in a place called Manchester by the Sea. I know yeah. where that's at, actually. You, yeah. mean, you mean the movie, like the movie? Well, the movie was a little bit uh, sad. <laughs> it's actually a very happy place, but <laughs> that's where I've been for the last 20 years. It's beautiful here. So everybody that lives there, were they like, okay, gee, this movie's kind of not exactly like our neighborhood? <laughs> yeah, it was... <laughs> It was not, no, it was yeah. a sad story. But yeah, very well, no. very well acted. As I oh, recall. yeah, yeah, no doubt about and, it. Uh, uh, not bad. Uh, Casey, yeah, Casey. Casey, yeah. I think he's actually better. I like him better. I mean, too. Oh, yeah, yeah. I don't know, something about his acting I like. Uh, but, um, okay, so, but where are you from? Where'd you grow up, family? Give me some, some early history, if you don't mind. Sure, I'm happy to. Well, um, I actually am the granddaughter of Russian immigrants who really? came over on the Aquitania with no money wow. um, and started a life for their three daughters, my mother and, and her two sisters in Brooklyn, New York. Not and your dad. So your mom came by herself. No dad. No, no. My, oh. my, my uh, grandparents on my mother's oh, side oh, oh, okay. came that way and they had, uh, my mother and oh, 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 I see, I see. other daughters. And I then know. my father's uh, parents also came when they were immigrants as well. One came from Paris, France, and the other from Poland, which is now part of Russia, I understand. Uh, but basically, my grandparents were all immigrants. So mm -hmm. um, right. my parents were first generation. I'm second generation. And I grew up for the first eight years of my life in Brooklyn, New York, which is okay. I'm forever grateful for Steve because I think it really gave me some grit <laughs> yeah, <laughs> and right. some fortitude. For sure. And uh, yeah, so I, I was there for eight years. Um, and then my parents divorced, and that was tough on me. I was an only child, um, but I was able to go to a very beautiful part of Long Island and grew up there for the rest of my uh, years before college. With and your mom, with your mom or dad? With my mom. Okay. She remarried. Did she remarry? She remarried, and I have a brother, which was oh. wonderful to have. Oh. I now have a brother okay. who is uh, younger than me, and really my my love. And I always wanted a sibling, so I got one. <laughs> and yeah, so then I I graduated um, from Great Neck North High School, which was one of the top high schools in the country. Mm -hmm. Still is, I think, very well regarded. Nice. Went on to uh, Vassar College. And then I went on to the University of Pennsylvania, where I had uh, my undergraduate, my graduate degrees. In communications, which I also um, made in. I also made in, by and the way. Yeah. 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 I saw that. Very good. Okay. Uh, your mom and or your, your dad, mom and stepdad, what'd they all do for a living? Give me a little color around uh, professions for them. Oh, you know, pretty interesting. My father, my stepfather was a criminal attorney. Uh, in Brooklyn. So we had a lot of interesting stories. Around <laughs> yeah, and he would um, really cross examine any boyfriends that darken my door. <laughs> um, they were pretty intimidated. Uh, yeah, by I imagine. He yeah. Prosecutor. <laughs> um, he was an assistant DA at oh, one boy. point in Brooklyn. Oh, uh, oh, my mom was basically a housewife, although she was a world class bridge player. She was extremely bright didn't have a real outlet for it back in the day she had to work as a as a legal secretary which is where she met my stepfather oh, I see. um but extremely uh accomplished as a world-class bridge player pretty cool very proud of her she traveled the world uh doing that kind of thing really oh that's interesting okay yeah um and my father my biological father was a very successful um, manager for a dairy company and ran a plant with a couple of hundred people. 
okay. uh, and had served in World War II. Oh, he did. And um, mm. was, um, you know, uh, one of the Morse code geniuses there that had to change the code so the Japanese wouldn't uh, know what we were saying to each other. And so, yeah, I come from a kind of an interesting background, I guess. Did your dad remarry? He did. And did you have any brothers and sisters on that side? Uh, they were already done. <laughs> she okay. had three children and they never okay. had any together. Okay, very good. And your parents, are they they're, they're still with us or they've passed on? So unfortunately, my uh, mother died in, in March of 2020 from COVID. Oh my gosh. It's very sad. Overnight, mm. she oh literally gosh. got sick. I talked to her that morning and that night she passed away. Oh, terrible. It came on her very, very quickly. Um, my father uh, passed away three months before her, uh, really of old age. Um, he mm. was getting old. Um, so he had a, a wonderful long life. Oh, still, though. Okay, so I'm letting that sink hard. in. So so 2020, which was a shitty year anyway, and then you got both parents dying within four months of each other. Oh, yeah, boy. That's okay. Hard. Yeah, I still I see them in my mind every day. And, that, is, uh, that is tough. They were, I was very, very blessed to have them as long as I had them yeah right because he would have man how old was your dad there oh he, i think he was uh 93 yeah okay so i was mm. very lucky yeah i mean hey i mean hey if he lives in 93 i mean pff, that's that's pretty good yeah he was good he was great he was very with it and very fun and always told me to think positive that was what he always said to me and i've taken that with me throughout my life how about your stepdad? Was he tough? Was he good? Was he was a cool guy? Oh, he was what? a lovely man. He was a very intelligent man. He was a guiding force in my life. Um, very much helped me figure out which schools to go to, um, college. And he very had good. a high bar for me and for my brother. My brother ended up getting an MBA from Harvard. You know, we were pretty high achievers. Wow. And I think he held the bar for us, which was very nice. Well, yeah, you both went to Ivy League schools for the yeah. listeners who don't realize that Penn is an Ivy League school. We're not talking about Penn State here. <clears throat> um, yeah, very good. Wow. Okay. Very successful. Uh, and what's your brother do? My brother is a very accomplished um, financial services leader. He it helps companies, a, a company that he works with now, um, handle major portfolios for investment portfolios for like major corporations and family um, um um, endowments, um, mm, cities, mm, states, mm, he, mm, he runs mm. the whole portfolios, uh, advises on the portfolios that they should invest in. So he's mm. an investment whiz. Sounds like you guys <laughs> need to, sounds like you guys need to trade uh, clients. You get your referral partners for each other or you should be. You keep it pretty separate actually. <laughs> so that'd be good. It's yeah. Is that better? Yeah. Is that... Right uh, now. Okay. Gotcha. Yeah. That way it doesn't get messy. Yeah. Okay. Uh, very good. And you're close to him. You said, you said, Oh, yes. Yeah. Um, He's my very, only sibling. And yeah, I love him to pieces. Very good. And then how about you? What's your social situation? Partners, husbands? Uh, what, what do you got? What do you got going on? Give us a scoop. <laughs> I, have a, uh, I met my husband in uh, at Penn. Oh. He was uh, a uh, dental student at the time. And we've been married ever since. And I have three beautiful girls. All right. Very good. Okay. And is he a dentist? He's a dentist. No wonder yes. your teeth are so beautiful and perfect. I'm, def <laughs> I'm guessing. I owe it all to him. <laughs> <laughs> uh, and your daughters, are they grown? Or are they, how old are they? So I'm not going to give you their ages because they're of age where I don't think they want me to say that. However, I will tell you that my oldest daughter, Carly, huh? is my co-founder at Notably. I don't know if you know that, Steve. I did not know that. I saw the pictures. Wow. I mean, she's got the blonde hair, so that threw me off a little bit. I don't know if she still has blonde <laughs> hair, but she has blonde hair in the photo. That's your daughter. Okay. That's my daughter. It's my oldest daughter. Uh -huh. uh, my father actually was blonde and blue eyed. So um, that's where she gets it from. And uh, yeah, she's my co-founder. She's just it. recently uh, was married to a wonderful young man on July 2nd. We celebrated and she's extraordinarily bright and motivated and uh who knew I was going to give birth to my co-founder, but I did. <laughs> well, I don't know. I'm sure I'm not the only guy to tell you this, but uh, you, you look like the same age. I mean, you look as young as she does. I, oh, gosh. Steve. I mean, I'm looking. I mean, you looked at your website. Uh, I mean, you wouldn't know. You wouldn't know that you're her mom. 
like no, 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 I, you wouldn't know. Uh, well, that's pretty cool. I guess, um, uh, you know, so how do you handle that at Thanksgiving and, and Christmas? You, you try not to talk about business like during dinner? Or what, how do you do that? Huh. Well, I also have to say that I have two other beautiful daughters. Um, okay. I have another one that's a bit younger than Carly, and she is an art director and works with her husband, okay. who is a, a digital marketing manager. And my youngest is a junior in high school. Okay. Very she good. keeps me on my toes. Trust me when I tell you, <laughs> never dull with her. Oh, she's and, the uh, she's the uh, rebel, so to speak. I don't know if that's yeah. the right word, but okay. <laughs> I mean, I think she is, and now I know it, whereas Carly told me that she was even worse, but I didn't know. <laughs> oh, I'm I'm aware now of everything that's going on. So. Does Carly confess to you now things yes. like, "Hey, mom, there was this one time that blah blah blah." Oh yeah, <laughs> she snuck out the window. And, oh yeah, I was oblivious to you. Honestly, I was. Uh, you know, it's, it's funny. Probably better. It's so funny when I was back at my mom's for Thanksgiving, and uh, she hates it when I bring stuff up like that. She's like, "I don't want to. Don't tell me. I don't want to know about it." <laughs> oh really? She does. Yeah. yeah what's the point? Why? I why well, do that? It's yeah. over. The past is past. So. Yeah, that's true. Uh, that's true. Uh, very good. Okay, so you get married uh, right out of school. Or did you guys? Did you guys marry when you graduated, or? or... No. And so um, my husband went uh, to be a Navy dentist in San Diego. I see. And I was fortunate enough to get a job. Um, I was recruited on campus by American Express, and I went to work in their headquarters in New York. Pretty cool. And I loved it. And uh, so after about a year, year and a half, um, my husband lured me uh, from Manhattan to San Diego because he got me on the weather. And he <laughs> said, it's so pretty. Come here. And I said, mm. OK, I will. And the weather so, is pretty excellent in San Diego. Yeah, it's be so beautiful. So mm. we moved. I moved out there to join him uh, um, got after about a year and a half in New York. Okay, very good. All right. Well, thank you for sharing those details. Now, the one thing I didn't get out of you, though, when you were a kid, were you, I mean, you went to really great school, so, and you went to a great high school, so you weren't a rebel, no, you got anything fun in there? Do you, did you get in trouble? Were you a good kid? Were you a bad kid? Were you? I was a good kid. Were you? Okay. Yeah, so I'm really boring. I was a really good kid. I, the worst thing that ever happened, I think, was I, my parents were always strict with me. Okay as they should have. I'm pretty strict with my kids too. Um, what I know to be strict. And <laughs> the worst thing that ever happened was I was, I think a senior in high school, I had a boyfriend who was uh, at Brown University and I was in high school and we were dating and I, my curfew was 12 o'clock in the morning, be home. And I went to open the door and the door wouldn't open. Okay. So I banged on the door, I threw pebbles to the window. That was it. They wouldn't answer the door. Because you were late. Because I was late. <laughs> so I spent the night in my boyfriend's car with like mosquitoes and it was hot. It was summer. <laughs> and in the morning, the door opened and I had hell to pay. <laughs> yeah. Oh, was, yeah. That was pretty bad. Oh, wow. Now, was your mom the softy, though, a little bit there? Oh, no, that? she was horrible. She was. <laughs> me. No, she would kill me. <laughs> she was very strict. <laughs> was she? Okay. She would, no, my, my stepfather is more of the softy for sure, but she oh. was she was tough. She was a tough lady. And I and I appreciate that in retrospect. Yeah, no doubt about it. Um, do you speak other languages? Because you know your grandparents were immigrants. I'm just curious. It's so funny. I fell in love with Latin in high school. You froze, Steve, by the way. I don't oh, know did if I? that matters, but blah 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 yeah. blah. <laughs> Here I so am. I I studied Latin in high school and I absolutely adored it. I did I studied five years and I have to say I got a five on the AP Latin test. Ooh. And so I um oh, until I got to Penn, I'd already qualified out of the language requirement, but I took a year of um advanced French just because I felt like it would be something I would like to know. Just okay. you know. It actually ended up ruining my grade point average because I, get, I had B's the whole way through and I didn't get many B's, thankfully. And and so I, I rue the day that I took that French course because, it, you know, I don't speak fluently or anything. I can do OK on a French in a French restaurant and read the menu. But 
that's about it. I went to France after I graduated and uh, as soon as I started telling the cab driver where to go in French, you know, he turned to me and he said, do you speak English? <laughs> so I knew I was uh, uh, Very good. What was your GPA coming out of college? I think it was about a 3.8. I graduated with honors and Jesus. Man, did I, you I do, was, give me some. You, you're too good. Okay. You're too good. Did, did you did you party in college? I mean, come on, give me something, Karen. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> you're too okay. Give, um, me, give me something. Didn't you get caught at like a at a at a party or something? You, didn't, you never were arrested. Anything cool? I mean, no. Anything cool. <laughs> I was no, I was actually the lead in a lot of the shows. Oh, oh really? So okay, very that's very busy. That's interesting. Um, I was I'm a singer and uh, an oh, actress by cool. training. Okay, and that's so cool. I was always you know dashing from classes to rehearsals, oh. and you know doing all that. That was always my my love and my passion. Did you think you wanted to be on Broadway? You know, not really, really, because I didn't think I was that good, but I loved it. And I, you know, I really enjoyed, I enjoyed it at the time. And I, you know, I did get an agent when I was out in San Diego. Oh, really? oh. did some commercials and Neat. I did a little soap opera here and there. And so you did? Oh, fun. okay. Yeah. Tell me, tell me what it is. I'm going to have to Google that. Can you tell? <laughs> I was just a, I was just really a very small part. Um, you don't okay all right it. you don't want the audience to know because we can all look it up after the <laughs> <laughs> i was in a roll aids commercial you where know, are you like that. do you still have access can you can you I do doubt you... it this is pre-internet so. i know i know but i mean do you oh, have yeah. like a do you have like a vhs tape at home somewhere <laughs> i have to look i probably do <laughs> but, yeah no i really was a good kid i don't think i did anything really bad i'm sorry i'm so boring well I'm just giving you a hard time, but I mean, that is pretty cool that you would did a commercial. So if your agent had gotten you a part on a sitcom or, or a mm. series, you, 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 you would have taken it. I mean, you were, you were close. You were close. Yeah. I know that was sort of like the road not taken for me, honestly, okay. where um, I could have probably gone that route okay. and uh, didn't, uh, I didn't. It, I didn't, I wasn't really willing to do that kind of like sacrifice that mm. I really admire people that do do that. And mm, I, okay. I, I, so I went the, the communications route where I could make a living right away. You know? <laughs> and you've been very successful by the way, tell us, walk us through your career a little bit uh, and, and give us the, give us the short story early on. Um, and you know, then we'll get into notably, but give us the, kind of career i mean you were at one place for like 21 years which was your company yeah um, right I, you know you want to talk to us about warner communications and then kind of roll up and notably go ahead sure well i'll go a little bit before that which is that okay. i was fortunate enough when i got the, to we moved from san diego to boston okay and for a short while i was at arnold um which is now I, it's arnold it was arnold and company at the time and i ran their pr group there great um then i was recruited by mullen to start their PR group from scratch. And that mm -hmm. was the defining moment for me because I got to work on Timberland and Stride Right and Smart Foods and mm. Hewlett Packard and Maserati and mm. it was unbelievably great. Great experience. And I worked with some amazing people and helped to grow the agency. Yeah. And I did that for quite a while and then really got the bug to do my own thing. The bug. I call it the bug too. That's interesting you mentioned that. I call it the entrepreneurial bug. Yeah. Okay. I think it was in my DNA to to do that. My my grandparents were entrepreneurs and I just always wanted to have my own business. And so I started Warner Communications. And that was in 1997. And you know, part of it was that I want to do my own thing, but I also want to play by my own rules. And yeah. <laughs> I wanted to not leave my, then I had two kids at the time. I didn't want to leave them all day, okay. um, which was very hard for me. And so I started to work out of my house and it was such an unusual thing at the time, Steve, that when I announced the agency, the local NBC affiliate came to my house literally and did a story on me. <laughs> this person would be actually Working. starting a PR firm out of her home. It was just such a <laughs> radical idea. I didn't think it was that radical, but apparently it was. You were remote before remote was cool. Yeah, I, I really was. And it it was a great opportunity 
I think for to hire some wonderful people because mm. they also wanted to live that life. Yes, too. no doubt, no doubt. And mm. so I was able to attract great talent and compete with the bigger agencies because you know we were smaller. We tried to do as best we could in terms of benefits, and we were very comparable. But the at the end of the day. Other people, whether they had children or not, they wanted to ride their horses in the morning. They wanted to yes. take a run in the morning. They didn't want to sit in traffic all day. You know, it was really a wonderful lifestyle Absolutely. for them. Yes. So, yeah, I did that for 20 years. Um, I sold it to a venture capital company <sighs> after 20 years, and I stayed on for another year or so as part of my um, agreement with with the new owners. Did they knock on your door? Were you tr Were you marketing the company for sale? How did that come about and how much, how many details can you give us about the successful exit? I don't know what you want to share, but go ahead. Yeah, sure. No, I actually had several suitors at the time. I uh -huh. had about three different um, organizations that were interested. I think I was just sort of at that point in life that we had had enough recognition. I was, you know, um, it was my own company. I had a hundred percent of the shares Beautiful. and I had people just reaching out to me from time to time saying, you know, if you're ever interested. And so, you know, at one point I just said, well, tell let's, me what you have to offer. Yeah. Let's talk you about know? it. <laughs> and so once I kind of get into that, got into that mode, then I was really looking more seriously at, you know, what my next chapter would be. Okay. And very so, good. Be mm. careful what you wish for, Steve, because I was really happy at the time when I sold Warner Communications because I thought, hey, it's going to be great for my company and the people that remain because it was a very you know good group that acquired us. Um, but I then all of a sudden wasn't in charge anymore. That's what happens when you sell a company. Yep. <laughs> and I didn't quite... I didn't quite get that. I thought, honestly, I thought, well, I'm going to sell it, but you know, they had said I'd stay on. And yeah. go on. It was a whole different thing. <laughs> and I really didn't like to work for someone. Well, yeah. I mean, you'd been working for yourself for yeah. so long, you know, Yeah. for so long. Like if you wanted to go to one of your daughter's events at two o'clock at school like you didn't have to ask anybody you know right. <laughs> exactly but even more than that just making decisions yeah on, you know, what's right for the client and giving mm. people time off for maternity leave and you know there were a whole lot of issues you've seen some of them in my posts yes you know where i i felt there was a layer of compassion that i wanted to share with the world and my you know, immediate colleagues, because I, I didn't have some of that sometimes growing up and not growing up, but in my, you know, business career yes. years ago, it was more difficult um, to be a working mom. Can you share and, the VC company or no? Um, It's, I, it's on my um oh. LinkedIn, if anybody wants to take a peek. Oh, it is. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Very good. Sorry. I probably should have known that. All okay. right. So it's on there. All right. And so you sell the company. Um, So it wasn't, it wasn't enough money to retire or you could have retired and you just, you got bored and you want to keep working. <laughs> yeah. The latter. Yeah. Um, I, you know, money isn't what motivates me. Okay. I have a very active mind and I love solving problems and I love helping clients and learning about their industries. And I love, uh, editing and brainstorming and strategizing. I, 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 I'm not a good um, person for, like, I don't play golf. My husband <laughs> plays golf. I don't you play didn't golf. pick up bridge? What about bridge? Your mom was I, don't, I never wanted to play bridge. My mother tried to teach me. You know, I, I don't really have, other than, you know, walking and working out, but that's a solo thing. You can't do that all day. Um, I don't have, like, an avocation, mm -hmm. really. So I would be very, very bored. I don't know what I would do with myself if I wasn't working. I'm very grateful to be working and to be doing my own thing. And um, I'm very grateful to have the opportunities in this country to that we have to do the kind of um, you know work that anybody wants to do. Anything so you, you want to do, you can do. Anything is possible. I'm you took grateful. a little time off. You took you took a year off or so, something like that, year and a half. Well, I had a non compete. I see. And that was the worst time of my life. <laughs> no, it really was because Ooh. I didn't have the opportunity to do what I love. Man. It was really, really hard. I could only, you know, I could only work out so much. I could, only, 
<laughs> I, could re I love to read. I could only read so much, you know. So I could not wait until um, that was over. And luckily, it ended a little bit early. Um, the VC firm that purchased me actually wanted to do something else and and acquire another company. So they asked me if I could, you know, end a little early on my non compete, and I did. I so see. That saved me about three months. <laughs> and uh, I was so anxious to get back to it. You should, you should have called your old, old agent in California and said, "Hey, I'm free. I'm ready for some commercials." <laughs> right. <laughs> I don't know what I would have gotten for a role, but yeah, I guess I could have done that. I think I'm past that now. I'm really you're past that. that. Okay. All right. So you get out of your non-compete and tell me why the name notably um, okay. and well, walk and, and, and give us a nice overview of, of notably today for the, for the listeners, you know, the elevator pitch, if you don't mind. And by the way, for the listeners, it's notably PR.com notably PR.com. Yeah. Go for it. The name and the overview. Okay, well, the name actually is has a little bit of a story because uh, I have to back up for a moment and say that I did uh, start the business with my daughter, Carly. Very cool. Uh, so she is my co-founder. For a while there, we didn't really want to tell people necessarily that she was my daughter because she didn't want to think, she didn't want to have people think it was good because she's my daughter. Yes. You know, after all, I had this successful company for 20 years and here I just brought my daughter in. Mm -hmm. um, she had actually had a very successful PR career. She had worked for me for a while, and then she went out to the West Coast and became a partner in a PR firm out on the West Coast and really knows her stuff. So gotcha. this was not um, nepotism. This was because she is extremely talented, and I learned something from her each and every day. No, I appreciate you sharing that. Thank you, because you're right. Most people would think that automatically. Yeah. Yes. So we finally got over that, and we do... We did tell people about it. It was actually a nice story and provoked media about that. But we actually started off um, with a different name for the company. <laughs> she wanted to call it SPORE, S-P-O-R-E Communications, which was a sort of an anagram for PR and SEO. Interesting. And pushed together. Okay. So we did initially launch as SPORE. And one day, one of her clients, um, former clients, called her and said, that is the worst name I've ever heard in my life. <laughs> and she said, well, what do you mean? Why? And he said, it just sounds awful. Sounds like a mold. Like, what are you trying to do? And she came over to me and I was never like, you know, I thought it was interesting, but I was never ne necessarily gung ho on the name. I could go one way or the other. And she said, you know, mom, he hates it. And I really respect him. Mm. So, um, to make a long story short, we decided, even though we had already launched, that what's in a name does matter. And we did a, a bit of a brainstorm and we came up with um, notably because we felt that what we really want to do is make our clients notable. I see. But notable or notably, all that was taken uh, uh, as a URL. So you went with notably PR, I'm assuming. Correct. Yeah. Yes. Okay. Yes. Did you try to purchase notably? Did you, did you make a run at it? I don't even remember Carly does that stuff. So I don't oh, know okay. if she did or not. Oh, okay. Okay. And yeah. tell us, yeah. Tell us what makes notably different and great. Go for it. <laughs> well, you know, there's a million PR firms out there. there. Right. Yeah. So you have to, first of all, we were very brave. We launched in the middle of the um, pandemic in August of 2020. So we were very brave, I think, to do that. She had just come, she had been living in LA for 12 years and came across the country. Uh, she now lives on in Massachusetts. Can I and, pause you? Can I pause you right there for a second? Yeah. Was that after your parents had passed? Yes. Yes. Man, 20, 2020 was a, it's a big year. Big year for you. I mean, you, yeah. you had you, your parents passed and, you, and then you launched a company with your daughter. I mean, that is yeah. a lot going on. Wow. Okay. Yeah. Sorry, I didn't mean to and interrupt your, interrupt your flow. Okay. Wow. I'm just thinking about your timeline. We wanted to do something a little bit different because we felt we did have some different talents and what we felt we were very good at and know we are good at is helping our clients scale dramatically. So if you just want to just get some press, there's a million PR firms out there. They can help you. If you want to go, you know, from pre-seed, for example, to going public, we're the, we're the company that will help you do that. Okay. We have the experience in so many different industries. We have so many different ways to get our clients noticed through primarily through earned media. 
that we can actually increase not only awareness, but valuation, help our clients fundraise, help them get to the next level and help them to get to where they need to go. Whether that, as I said, is, you know, pre-seed to series B or C or actually take them public, which we've done as well. So mm -hmm. it's, yeah. Mm -hmm. So we really want um, clients that want to make a huge difference and want to rock and roll, quite frankly, and are willing to take chances. So is it the, um, is it the lifestyle business that's ready to turn it into a growth business? They're ready to flip the switch and, and charge forward. Is that your, your target? Well, we work with any kind of industry, Steve. So we're completely agnostic in terms of industry. So we've okay. worked in biotech and supply chain and consumer packaged goods and financial services and ed tech and you name it, we've worked in those uh, vertical markets. So any um, market uh, that a client finds themselves, we can help them. And uh, is there a size that you're targeting in revenue and profits? Uh, what, you know, yeah, what's your target in their financial timeline? You know, it's really not so much about that because we've worked with startups that, you know, are, are early, obviously early stage that we've had great success with and we've worked with publicly traded companies. So I think it's more about the people and what they want to accomplish and okay. what they're willing to um, let us accomplish with them really as, and it sounds so corny, like, but as their partners, mm -hmm. you know, life is short. <laughs> I know that well. Um, and I, I love working with people that you feel appreciated and you feel like you can tell them exactly when they're doing well or when they need to course correct and they listen and they're engaged, you know, I mean, there's, it's very hard if you tell clients, you know, I really want you to do X, Y, Z and they don't listen. Um, and they're entitled uh, not to listen, but then we become less valuable. Okay. Can you just repeat that whole thing right there? <laughs> Cause I, <laughs> you know that. Uh, oh my God. Yeah. You know, as yeah. a, as a recruiting firm, if we could just get our clients to listen and communicate timely and respond right. and be engaged, uh, prop, I mean, oh, geez. Yeah. Okay. Uh, but the good news is you're, you're, you're successful enough. You've been around long enough to where you can fire clients that are, that are crappy if you need and to. We have. And we have. <laughs> We have. Yeah, um, that's, yeah. you know, that's not always a, a happy thing. I'm never no, happy to do that. It's never happy, I always, but... I, I'm an optimist. I always want to make it work and I always want to help our clients be successful. But sure. sometimes either they won't listen, Steve, or they're, they're, what they want is so outlandish Ridiculous, that I, yeah. can't, I yep. can't deliver it. I don't want them to pay us and be unhappy. Yeah. I want You're... them to be happy. I would add a couple more uh, things in there. They also could just be assholes because I've had some of those and you're just like, I'm not, I'm not going to let you treat my recruiters that way. You're not going to talk to us that way. Like I'm not, we don't have to do that. You know, I don't have, yeah. I don't, I don't need that experience in my life. Have a nice day. See ya. <laughs> yeah. We try and weed that out from the beginning. <laughs> right. Yeah. We try and weed that out from the beginning. You know, it's, it's important. Uh, it is important because it goes back to the life is short thing. Like, yeah. I, you know, at this stage in my life, yeah, like I'm, no, I want to work with not only people in Rider Flex that are awesome to have fun with and work with, but I want clients that are enjoyable to deal with too. Like, I know not everybody's perfect, but, you know, dealing with, with clients that are messy and, and assholes, like, we don't have to do that anymore. And by the way, for the, for the aspiring entrepreneur, you know, it, that's easy to say once you're established and, it's easier to say for me and Karen here, you know, once, once you got enough clients and you can fire some, if you need to, I understand how, you know, when you're starving and you're like, Oh my God, if I don't get this next client, I don't know if I'm going to pay my rent and you'll deal with it. You'll deal with the devil if you have to, you know, mm -hmm. I've been there, but uh, boy, as soon as you can move past that, I highly recommend it. No, you, I mean, just move. hundred percent, a hundred percent. It is a luxury to be able to do that. Not everybody can. It is. I also will say that I think sometimes we jump the gun and we think somebody's a jerk, mm -hmm. they may not be. True. They may have other things going on in their lives, or Great we point. didn't communicate well. And sometimes you just have to say, look, you know, let's talk about this because I feel that you're not happy or there's something missing in the relationship. Is there something we're doing? Is it something, you know, that we can do better together? And I like to give them the chance mm. to do that um, yes. before I make a decision 
that it's not workable because I have heard different kinds of stories about why people are sometimes mean or difficult and it has nothing to do with us. It's true. It's so true. Yes. Pressures elsewhere. I would say the other thing that comes into play there is the human element where uh, we've had uh, a particular recruiter, their personality and the personality of the client's contact Mm -hmm. for whatever reason, they just didn't like each other. Who who knows? Right. I mean, you just never know. We put a different recruiter on it. Everything's fine. Right. Yeah, that's true. It could be personality. A hundred percent it can be. Yeah. Yeah. So to your point, it's always good to flush it out. Let's make sure, you know, double check everything. Yeah. It could be other issues. Yeah. You never know. I, you know, I just want to make the point though, that I think unfortunately that email has become the bane of so many of our existence. Great point. You know, I grew up picking up the phone. Me too. <laughs> right and talking to people yes seeing if there was a problem seeing if there's something we could iron out talking and so many times now with, if there is a problem you get this curt email you're supposed to figure out what it means you make yourself you know upset thinking what is it that they're trying to it, we yes. have to talk more <laughs> we so- really do uh, yes. Oh my gosh. You're right? preaching. You're preaching. You're, I love it. I love it. You know, how many times, if I had a nickel for every single time I've told somebody, I've, I'll always, they'll come to me and they'll be like, Hey, we got this problem. This person, this, this, and this, and la 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 la. And I always go, have you called them? Right. Have you Pick called the them? Pick up the phone. And they'll always go, well, no, I haven't called. I'm like, do me a favor, call them, talk to them, or better yet, if you're in the same building, go talk to them. Right. And if that doesn't solve it, then come see me. Exactly. I can't tell you, even recently, there was a client um, that Ugh. sent me an email, which usually is not a good email, which is, can we talk one-on-one about something? And it was just, I just had a, a meeting with them, you know, with my team. Yeah. And I thought, oh no. Here we go. What's something? Yeah. <laughs> and so, he you know, he said, I'm available on such and such a day. And I said, okay, yeah, I'm available too. But then I hung up, I hung up. And then I just, just picked up the phone and I tried to call him on the fly. And I said, I didn't want to wait till next week. Great. You know, tell me what you're thinking. Fix it now. And it, fix it now. Let's just fix yeah, it. I want to know. I want to be able to address it. And it was actually something that had nothing really to do with, you know, performance or anything like that. It had something to do with another colleague of his. But that was helpful to me because I would probably worried about it all week. And- yep. You know, for, why? Why waste that kind of psychic I, energy? Yeah, totally agree. And he was absolutely lovely and appreciated that I called and just didn't think I had the time for him at that moment, but I made the time. <laughs> Sometimes I will, uh, somebody will be on the phone with me or on a video conference and they'll be talking, they'll be complaining about somebody they're having a problem with. And I'll say, well, let's just call them right now. I'll just text them. We'll get them on the phone. Yeah. And all of a sudden they kind of, they, they get a little. <laughs> I think it's an age thing too. It is. I yeah. I, I do. I know my, my daughters, they don't really like to call call on the phone that they like to be to text them right <laughs> and I, I just think that but i do think that that is something in business that should be fixed i do too we need could, more conversations oh my gosh i completely agree email has yeah there's a lot of bad things about email email but people don't understand email first started really and i'm not i'm not a scientist on this topic but it was a form of documentation, not mm. conversation. Yeah. It wasn't designed for conversation back and forth. It was designed to send a document that needed to be filed, stored, documented, whatever. And, and then people turned it into a conversation tool where they're trying to have five, six emails back and forth about the same topic. I don't know how yeah. it got there, but that's, that's not what it should be used for. If somebody emails me twice on the same topic, I just pick up the phone. I'm just like, no, yeah. I'm, not, I'm not doing this. <laughs> anyway. And the other thing that I always tell everybody on my team is that if you have anything negative to say, do not email it. Great do tip. Do not put it in writing Love because it. it'll sting very badly and it could be taken completely out of context. And that's the kind of thing you talk to somebody. Very about. good. Well, uh, let's use uh, RiderFlex as a case study then for notably. I'm ready to, uh, so use me for an example. We're about a two and a half million dollar firm. And I would say we've run it like a, my partner and I, Scott, we've, we've run it like a lifestyle business. And what I mean by that is, you know, we, uh, the company breaks even on the bottom line. Cause we, cause we make it break even. Cause we're just, you know, if we have some, we'll, we'll spend it on expenses or whatever. Like we're not, 
we're not trying to show net income to to sell it right now. Uh-huh. We could make that switch. I mean, we could easily go there and and show twenty percent EBITDA or whatever if we wanted to. Haven't done it. Could. Mm-hmm. Um, now that we're about a two and a half million dollar company, we've gotten a few phone calls. People Oops, sniffing. Just froze. Oh, say that again. You froze. Now that we've gotten, now that we've gotten it to two point five million, we've gotten a few phone calls here and there. People sniffing around a little bit, you know. Mm-hmm. And uh, so Scott and I are like, well, we don't really have a plan to sell it, but maybe, <laughs> you know. <laughs> mm-hmm. uh, what if we wanted to call Karen and her team and be like, okay, hey, cool, let's uh, let's do it. Um, can can a small company like mine afford the awesome services of notably? I mean, talk to me how it would work. Pitch me, pitch me. <laughs> well, you know, I always say that PR, what we do, which is earned media. So we're not buying ads, right? Mm-hmm. We're getting stories about our clients. We're getting podcasts for our clients. We're getting articles written about our clients or our clients will write what we call thought leadership pieces okay. that we will ghostwrite for them. These are all things that you see in the news or on a TV show. I just saw our client, uh, Tim Draper, um, on Fox news as Sweet. I turned my head. These are all, um, elements of publicity, right. Of being in the news. And so if you were to compare PR and the cost of that working, say with, with notably versus, one ad, say in the you know New York Times, it would be much, much less money, tons less money for a year's worth of us. I see. So it's the most cost effective and most authoritative and believable way to spend your money, period. I like, that. I, like that. I call it the wind beneath every other marketing tactics wings. Because if you get a story, let's say you get a story in the Wall Street Journal, Steve, about yes. Ryder Flex and what yes. you did. Yes. You take that, you can put that on your website, you can put that on social media, you can send that to your prospects, you can use it in a, in so many different ways. Mm-hmm. And it instantly, as they're looking for a uh, recruiting firm, mm-hmm. your Google search will come up much, much higher. Your mm. authority will be much, much higher. Your SEO will be much, much improved. And you'll start to get more um, hits to your website, you know, just organically. And if you multiply that by, we try and get a, a, an article or an opportunity, I should say, because it could be a podcast or a TV interview or what have you. We try to get at least one opportunity a week. Oh, really? Okay. One yeah. a week. If we have hard news, meaning if we have a financing event or if we have a case study to pitch or we have a survey to report on, it's more. Okay. It could be five or six things or more a week. Mm. But if there's mm. just nothing to work with that's new, We'll come up with some opportunities to provide commentary, to provide an article, to tie into news. So if you think about where, say, Rider Flex is today in terms of how many stories you're included in Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. versus a year from now, we were working together, you would have 50 stories. Nice. What do you think that would do to your search engine? Uh, Yeah, I love it. I love it. I love it. Hey, we just launched a new book. I'd be great to get that written about in the Wall Street Journal. (laughs) <laughs> What's the book? What's the book? The book is right, the Rider Flex Guide, Inspiring and Hiring. Uh, oh, I, I love will, it. I will send you a copy for sure. Um, Thank you. Um, th- that sounds great. Uh, can I afford it as a small? I mean, can a $2 million firm afford it? I, I don't know. I, I, I don't know. I guess it depends, right? I guess it all depends. I think it depends, you know, what your marketing budgets are. But it's, I always say to people, you know, if you have, a person, let's say you have a, you know, low six figure person, it's not going to be any more than that. Okay. Um, so if you think about having a head of PR that you would hire and you don't have to pay us um, any benefits or profit sharing or 401k or anything like that, you know, I think it's very affordable. Okay. And do I have to sign a year long contract, six months, month to month? Yeah, we have a 60 day termination on all of our clients. Okay. Contracts. Very good. Okay, cool. So, all right. Yeah. All right. I, I was hoping you weren't going to say it was a year long contract. I'm always afraid. Oh, we don't lock anybody in, but most, we, we have long-term clients. I'm sure you do. Okay. Yeah. Most people, most entrepreneurs are scared to sign long-term contracts as I'm sure yeah. you, as I'm sure you know. Yeah. <laughs> and we don't need it because I think you don't want to force somebody to work with you. you want them no to doubt. 
you because you're doing a great job for them and they and they value you. I always tell my clients that, you know, they'll look at our contract and ours is a 30 day out or whatever. And I always say, look, I don't care what the contract says. Like if you call and say we're fired and you don't want to work with us, I'm not going to like sue you right? to make you work with me. I mean, right. <laughs> I mean, we need a certain amount of time because we're already pitching stories in advance and working uh, with media in advance, which is why we need 60 days. But most PR firms have 90 days. Oh, really? Okay. Yeah, Good to know. Standard. Very good. Very good. We want and to just make sure that we fulfill on the promises that we make to the media as we're working with them and be able to wrap things up if we have to. You know, so often we've had like 260 guests on the Rider Flex podcast and a bunch of them have been in marketing, you know, whether it's marketing agencies or whatever, not very many PR firms. I'm trying to think of another PR firm. Actually, you may be the only one, but a lot of marketing people and they'll get on the podcast and their, their specialty is marketing. And then I look at their LinkedIn profile and they have like, 500 connections and they never post and they got like 200 followers on Facebook or whatever. I looked at your LinkedIn. I'm like, okay, she's for real. I mean, just look at her LinkedIn profile. If she can do that with that kind of following for herself personally, what do you think she can do for your business? Uh, for the listeners that don't know, uh, Karen Warner, you can find her on LinkedIn. She's got, like, I don't know, 25,000 followers. And when she posts something, there's like a hundred thousand comments or something. <laughs> I want to plug my daughter, Carly Martinetti, my co-founder, who has about 75,000. Wow. Okay. So wow. she's a millennial. So there's more of them out there, I think, than what she has to say. Because we uh, both do about the same amount of posting. But That's great. No, it's, yeah. it's very important. especially and Between us, I think we're a pretty good powerhouse of about 100,000 followers on LinkedIn. Yeah, that's great. I mean, that's fantastic. Yeah. Do you is the goal now to grow and have another exit at some point, or let your daughter take over? Or do you guys talk about the future at all? Not really, because I never had a plan um, before, and I I really don't now. I, I I love what I do, and she loves it too. And I think we just want to be you know, very successful, continue to grow. I think we always want to be a boutique. Okay. Um, but I think at the end of the day, I'll probably get too old for this at some point and she'll make that decision, but it will be hers to make. Now, who is it? 50, 50. Can you share ownership with me? Do you want to tell us? <laughs> oh, you froze. Them. Yeah. Do you want to tell us ownership? Okay. Yeah, it's 50, 50, Steve. Okay. What happens when there's like a disagreement? What do you guys flip a coin or what, what do you do? Uh, we work it out. <laughs> and, you know, we're very like-minded, uh, surprisingly. We're very, very similar, and we're very like-minded. Hey, you know, I mean, I raised her, and, you know, so we, we, we see the world in a very similar way. It's rare that we have a big disagreement. Very but do, do you ever have to throw in there, like, okay, but I just want to remind you that I am mom, and I did grow a firm for 20 years. <laughs> yeah. I think more so at the beginning, but I think she's, she comes to me when she needs my mom type of veteran PR person experience. And okay. I come to her when I want, you know, a different approach than what I'm thinking. Yeah. So I think we know that about each other. And okay. that's really great because she can just say, Hey mom, I, I don't, I'm not sure what to do with this. What do I do with this? And do I'll you, say the same to her. No. Do you guys have the duty split? To, how many employees you got right now? 15. And do you have it split? Do you tell your employees, you know, call her for this, call me for this? What, um, she's more, I do all of the um, administrative. So I do all of the, you know, HR, payroll, billing, uh, you know, benefits, 401k, okay. all that workers comp, all that stuff. I do that. And I also manage a series of accounts with others. So I'm on certain accounts and she's on certain accounts. And sometimes we overlap and we're on both. Okay. So it does kind of, she does more pitching than I do. She does a lot of the media relations strategy and that keeps you pretty busy. I got you. All right. I do I a know lot of editing. I'm a very good editor. I bet you are. Yeah. Uh, I, I did notice it was super clear that neither one of you have CEO on your title on the webpage. I kept trying to, I'm like, well, wait a minute, no. who's, who's in charge here? What's what's going on here? No, that's why I think we just see ourselves as co-founders. Okay. Very good. Well, I'm glad that's working out for you. I mean, Hey, Me too. running a business with a family member is not always easy. 
<laughs> it's one of the great blessings of my life to be working with her and to see how she is, how much grit she has. Um, and it's just, it's a thrill. That's really. great. I didn't think I'd be able to work with my wife, but she's working with the Sherrod Rider Flex now. And, uh, oh, really? How's that I'm, going? It's going great. I mean, you know, and, and in fact, as the audience can see, I'm, I'm in an RV parked outside of my daughter's house. And when me and Kim work from the tra travel trailer, I mean, we're in a very small space, right? It's not like, I mean, we're, we're next to each other, you know? And uh, yeah, it's great. I mean, uh, you know, I, it, it helps to enjoy the person you're hanging out with every day. It does. Right? It does. <laughs> well, it's just funny because uh, Carly just had all of her wisdom teeth out last uh, Monday. She's been going through a tough time of it. And she actually wanted to, she wanted to come home. And, oh. and hang with me even though she works with me all day because she oh. knew i would you know kind of just take care of her a little bit well so that's nice that's I'm nice to be her mom as well as her partner that's nice I she lost that that's know? cool that's cool very I cool that is important karen congratulations on everything i mean not only Thanks. great education great career great exit on your first company then you started a second company with your daughter. I mean, hey, you're a hustler, man. I like it. <laughs> and back at you, Steve. <laughs> right, congrats. Thanks so much for sharing your story oh, on the show. I, I appreciate it. Safe travels. <laughs>